The following presentation was recorded at the 2012 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond Sponsors in 2012 for helping make these videos possible. Surveys are available at the registration desk. If you can fill one out and put it into the, the survey box before the keynote starts uh, tonight, then you'll be in the raffle. Um, there is a Saturday raffle and there is a Sunday raffle. There is a different survey for the Saturday raffle and a new one tomorrow for the Sunday raffle. They say Saturday and they say Sunday on the top. So if you want to enter the Sunday raffle, same thing tomorrow, pick up a survey form, put it in the box, um, and they'll draw that. Now we'll start with Brian Smith, who's going to introduce the Q-Box, and um, well, man. you're on. How you guys doing today? So I'm going to pass this guy around. Uh, I hope to get it back. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, just you know, take a look at him, and uh, you know. Doors on close. Let them sit down. Okay, my name is Brian Smith, and I'm here to talk about the Q Box. It's a really nice device. First, I want to let you know I'm not a Solid Run employee. Solid Run is the company who produces the Q Box. Uh, they're out of Israel, um, and one of the, the, the actually the CTO of the company. He's a really big Linux kernel developer and uh, they are uh, pretty much a class act, as you can tell by the hardware when it comes around, and I'll uh, talk quite a bit about it. So what I'm gonna tell you about pros and cons and you know, tips and tricks and whatnot is gonna be like real information. I'm not pitching anything, I'm not selling those. You know, as I said, I wanna get that, up, that, that, that one back that's going around the room. And so you know, it, it's not that I'm trying to be disingenuous. Everything that I'm gonna tell you is from my personal experience. I'm not a salesman. So what is the Q-Box? Are you guys all embedded developers? Anybody new to embedded? Please raise your hand, I wanna. And so who, who all, does anybody have a Q-Box in here currently? Well, of course you got a Q-Box in there. Okay, so Q-Box, as far as embedded Linux goes, it's, a, it's an SOC design, which is called a system on chip. It is very nice, low, footprint, low power. That's not the cue box, but it's a puppy in a box. The whole thing is, is what is in this box that makes it so spectacular? You can see it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's roughly two by two by two. It's actually smaller than, than a two inches cube. And packed inside of there, you have at least four different processing units. It can crank out, it can cook through very very high quality media. And this is the only device that you'll get, whether you have a panda board, it's a, a beagle bone, none of those devices come with a power adapter. It's the only one that currently comes with a power adapter and comes in a case. Nothing else does. So it, it's, it's, it is a developer device. It's not for production. It's not an end product, even though as enthusiasts, we use it, we use it as an end product but it is pretty much ready to go out of the box. It's got an SD card in it. It's populated with, a, with an operating system, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And so that is a clip of um, uh, Quake 3 running on the Q-Box. I, I try to get it on a projector. We'll see what we can do, but it won't look like that. And so that is Totem you know, running uh, you know, the visualizations that uh, you know, play when you play music. I'm playing reggae right there, so it's kind of funky. But um, it's doing all of that with acceleration. It's, and, and so the thing about the Q-Box is that it's only 800 megahertz processor, but in ARM standards, that is very fast with everything else that is on it. Okay, 
So the question we had was, what is dual issue? I'm going to jump right in. So if any of you guys have any questions, just kick right in, and I'll incorporate it into the talk. So that is a prime example of what dual issue is. So uh, a dual issue processor, or a dual, dual issue instruction that gives you double instructions at the same time. So basically, it's like carrying a brick. If you carry one brick, so as the, as the workload comes, you can parallelize when you have dual. When, when it's dual, you can parallelize. So you can carry two bricks instead of one. So a processor that is only single issue at the same speed can only do half the throughput or half the instructions, the, the clock that a dual issue can. So it, is, it, it does quite a bit at that 800 megahertz. It's got a USB JTAG. Hmm, I think something is missing. Say it again, please. Well, no, no. You can, you can, you can actually see. He, the question was, is, um, is it just USB serial? It's, it, it's serial and it's, it's unbrickable. It's got the FTDI chip, and you can actually um, write U-boot to SBI flash over that uh, TTY USB zero. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it's got one gigabyte of uh, or one one gigahertz of uh, DDR RAM running at one gigabyte. I'm sorry, of DDR uh, three RAM running at 800 megahertz. That micro USB is what will give you that USB JTAG. So you've got the HDMI that will give you display, but if you want uh, boot bootloader access, so you can interrupt it and maybe uh, type some commands in or you know some parameters, you uh, hook up the uh, mini USB. It's kind of dark, but that little guy right there. And then, you know, you'll see, well, that's the wrong picture, but you'll see something like that show up in your DMSG. You'll get this TTY USB device, and then you can run PuTTY, you can run Minicom, you know, any, any term, terminal program, and then access, you'll get a prompt. You know, you'll get your root login or whatnot. And right next to that, right above it, is a SPDIF connector. And if you guys know what SPDIF is, it's, uh, it's for like, yes, it's for, for digital audio, and it's pretty much, it's, it's, uh, it's optical. And so that's what that guy is right there. And it's got eSATA. So if you look at all the other devices out there, Trim Slice, Panda Board, Beagle Board, Beagle Bone, no device except for the Shiva plug, which is, this is a Marvell product. So all the Marvell products have, um, Gigabit Ethernet and, and access to eSATA. Nothing has access to eSATA. No, no other devices. So that's what makes this little guy, who's got it right now? Or that, that's what makes it very unique because the throughput that you can get over eSATA versus going over USB, right now, SD, uh, XC all of the time, and just going over a network that may be 100 uh, megabit versus it, this one being a gigab one gigabit, and there is where the um, the the eSATA connector is right at the bottom. You know, if you don't have it or until it gets to you, you'll, you'll be able to see that. Gigabit Ethernet, that's a big deal. It supports jumbo frames. You know, so the MTU on this guy is not 1500. You set it to 9000. You got your gigabit router, and you can do some serious throughput on it. You know, so like I transferred a, I think it was like a 4.6 gig plus um, movie that, you know, I got from somewhere. And um, so I transferred it and it took, it took four minutes and six seconds. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, it, it is a big deal, especially when you want to do uh, streaming of uh, HD, uh, 1080p quality stuff. You know, it's, you can do it, you can do it over Wi-Fi because of the acceleration on this. But if you're doing something like uh, DLNA for like some sort of PlayStation Media Center, uh, trying to stream to another device, you need that gigabit Ethernet connectivity. You really do. And there she is right there, there's the port. That is a big deal. It's a really big deal to have gigabit Ethernet on the SOC. I mean, that is an eSATA, that is a big deal. Micro SDXC which that supports up to a 64 gigabyte uh, uh, flash media, but 
I wouldn't do that. There's no, there's no reason to use a 64 gigabyte flash card in anything like this. Because uh, I don't know if you guys know that most flash media has a finite number of writes. Now, theoretically, it's 100,000 writes, which you never know because there's secret sauce going on. You don't, you don't know the wear leveling. So any flash media that you have, whether it be a USB flash, whether it be a micro SD, all of them actually have a, a limit. And then once you reach that certain number of write cycles, you can't write to it anymore. You can read but you can't write. So for instance, you run an operating system off of this thing and you're running a journal and file system, so that increases the rights. Some people may be crazy enough to run a database on it and that'll, you will, you will destroy, I've, I've, I've destroyed SD cards in like three days just doing normal stuff. You know, not, not doing, you know, I wouldn't run in like Postgres on or anything, but um, you really need to, to be using a block device to boot from and to store all your files you can mess around and just maybe boot the kernel from it if you want to, but you know, just go with ESATA. If you get one of these devices, that's where you, that's where you wanna go. If not, worst case, get a um, external hard drive, you know, and then uh, go USB 2.0 and then boot from that. So there's the HDMI, the uh, micro SD guy. Where do I get this, this point? Ah, oh, the layers don't work. It's, it's right down underneath the HDMI, and there are the two USB ports. Nothing special on the USB, it just works. Now, there's a whole bunch of other things that it has in it. So the HDMI port is a, is a 1.4a port, and it has CEC, which is, I think it's a consumer electronic connection, where CEC will allow you to connect to, say, um, various other devices and they can communicate with each other. And so you should, you should be able to use one remote control to control all of the devices. So when you hook up your uh, cue box to your TV, when you press power to shut down your cue box or to shut down your TV, then the cue box will say, okay, shut down the other device. So shut down this other device in the chain, so to speak. And as I said, you should be able to use one remote control with CEC to use uh, to control various devices all connected through HDMI. The uh, Vivanti uh, GC600 is the GPU that does the 2D and 3D acceleration and it has direct frame buffer acceleration which means that you don't even need uh, X to do acceleration. So it, you know, it, that, is a, that in itself is a major, major, major deal. Spadiff audio port, it can do 192 kilohertz out. That's like very high quality. And 96 in, that is super high quality. And that's optical. So anything that you do as far as, uh, you know, as I said, if you have some questionable uh, MKV file that I, I guess, let's say that you back up your own Blu-rays, you can play it and, and then play it into your, your, uh, your sound system and everything will be phased correctly. You'll get your whatever, uh, Dolby going and it'll work great. Infrared receiver is another big deal. So to have an infrared receiver on a box that is purposed, the use case primarily for that is a set-top box, is for a media server, things such as that. So to have it built in and you know all you need to do is install the package that, that pretty much manages it and that's it. No, no drivers needed. It just works. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that. And a SESA engine right there, cryptographic engine security accelerator, what that'll do is if you, let's just say you have an eSATA uh, device hooked up and you want it encrypted. So the big thing about this acceleration, that's how you get the 1080p video and that uh, 3D, all this acceleration is t offloading it from the CPU. So whenever you wanna create any sort of uh, SSHA, SSHA or um, uh, AES, any, anything that, that requires encryption, it'll offload it to the, to, the, uh, to the SESA engine and then it'll speed it. It'll be much faster than if it was trying to do it in processor. So if you have an encrypted drive, your writes and your reads are gonna be much faster than if you didn't have that SESA engine because it's, it's actually happening in hardware and it's not using just clock cycles, bless you, to, uh, to, to process it. And so there is uh, the actual infrared, you know, window for the, uh, oh, it's on the back, I think, I think that side is facing you. 
on the, uh, on the device. So the boot methods for this guy. As I said before, you got eSATA. You can boot, uh, you can mount your uh, root from NFS. You can uh, boot from uh, USB and you can boot from micro SD. And all of that is right there in that little small form factor. So, you know, that's pretty much straightforward in that regard. Practical applications. As I mentioned before, you know, automatically, just because of gigabit ethernet and the size, no, pop, no fans, it's a, uh, the form factor, you know, lends it to just being any sort of server. Now, the I.O., I mean, you're not, <clears throat> you can run Apache on it. You can run light HTTPD on it. You can run uh, a number of uh, daemons on it simultaneously, and you really never notice the load on a, on a system. <clears throat> but um, as far as, like, <clears throat> as a desktop system, you can run that by itself. Uh, you know, for, for daily computing. There are some other things that Qbox and Solid Run and Marvell have offered that no other platform have available. So why you use it as desktop? So most people want to use ARM for a desktop, but what is the biggest thing that you think you're lacking f from ARM on a desktop? Anybody know? Anybody? So wh what, do, what do most people do when they get on the internet? What sites do they go to? Flash. Flash. There you go. So to be able to use that joker as a desktop PC, you got to be able to go to YouTube. You know, people live on YouTube. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just got to happen, right? And some other, you know, sites that people use, but I'll tell you all about how you can do Flash on it. It's no other platform has it currently. And so I'm just, this is just there. I'm not going to read it, none of that stuff, actually. But, but that's the actual, that is, it, this is the Armada 510. It's an Armada 510 based unit. So all of this stuff is what is capable on the die, on the chip. Now, you're not, like, you're not going to see uh, this TWSI two, uh, two wire serial interface. You know, mo a lot of this stuff is not actually populated on the board, but the processor itself can do it. Now, what is available, is, which is a big deal, that right there in the middle, that DMA right next to the crypt cryptographic engine and security accelerator, that DMA and Zor engine, that is basically bit for bit redundancy that is pr primarily used in RAID devices. So whenever you do writes and reads, it's going through Zor engines. And so it is, it's, it's optimizing it. It's, it's, very, it's very optimized. That uh, VMeta uh, HD video decoder, that is what's you know, kicking in and, and, and allowing you to do that 1080p stream, that 720p, uh, or 1080i, whatever stream that you have without a frill. And so this is what's actually there. From, from that to this. You know, so this is kind of like the pie in the sky. It's there. It's, it's a, it's, it could be there, but it's not populated. So these are things that you actually have access to. Uh, and I didn't make that slide either. It was kind of ugly. But uh, <laughs> so, so uh, you know, like I already talked about the SPDIF, the micro USB. You know, it's all pretty much straightforward right there. The WMMX. So, if, and if, you, if, any, if any of you guys know much about like, you know, embedded in instruction sets, so this doesn't do neon. So, certain applications like, like uh, VLC, the media player, does neon. So if you want to play your, your video with VLC, this ain't the device to do it on. Now, Totem, uh, through GStreamer, that WMMX is an instruction set that allows, that allows you to be able to utilize the uh, acceleration from the device. So there's this big list of, of, of programs that, that, do, that, that do it through GStreamer. And so you just use that instead of using VLC. And Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and, and it'll work. You mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned Flash in terms of Adobe Flash. Does the device have any Flash reason on it? So, so the question was, is, uh, he said, I mentioned Flash in, re in terms of Adobe Flash, but does it have any internal memory? So NAND-wise, it's, it's not as if you have, you have memory for bootloader. Mm -hmm. 
That, that, that's it. It's, it's pretty much, it, it, it stores, it stores uh, you boot and that's it. You know, and, and then you, but you've got your one gig of, so if, if you want to, you can boot it and, and mount a RAM disk and use part of that, you know, if you want to, and it'll be super fast. Uh, you know, w when you have, oh, that sector is, I can't remember exactly how big that is. That's a good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you have access to the kernel in the source of the kernel. Ubu has access to all of these capabilities of the kernel. Now, just to give you a little bit of context, that's huge. Yeah, it's it's not enough space to put the kernel there too, just Ubu. Yeah, it it, it ain't space for that, but uh but he's right though, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, so these are, the, so there are, and th this is not the, an exhaustive list of, of uh, distros and, and OS's that you can run on a Qbox. You know, I'm a Debian guy, so I put Debian at the top of the list. I'm a Debian guy, so I put Debian at the top of the other list too. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, so, you know, uh, Ubuntu. So now the, the funny thing with Ubuntu is, uh, you know, Ubuntu and Lenaro, they put a lot of money in embedded development. So Ubuntu is really the way to go and that's actually what comes on a device, but it's not fair. It's, it's not fair, but that's just, they got the money. Well, so, so Cunix, he, well, the question is, is RIM, uh, Research in Motion, gonna continue with Cunix? So, Cunix is an operating system that is a real, out of, out of that whole list, it's the only real-time operating system. It is a serious, it's, it's, it's a very serious operating system. And yeah, it is very sweet. And so uh, it used to be open source and then RIM, Research in Motion, bought it and then they closed part of the source. And, but they still, uh, Cunix, they still release BSPs, which is the board support of Pack platform to where, you know, like there, there's a B, there are BSPs for the uh, Panda board. Um, for, uh, well, there are two BS, BSPs for Panda board. There's BSP for Beagle board, Beagle bone and Beagle board. And so, you know, Cunix runs on a lot of, on, a lot of embedded stuff. It, as I said, it's, it's real time. You know, Linux, it's not, it's not real time. Symbian OS is real time, but Cunix is, is pretty hardcore. Arch Linux. So the guy that, name, what's your name again, buddy? Jason is a Arch Linux guy, and so there is Arch Linux arm, and they just was it just Monday that it was, it was early morning on Thursday for the official Nary Tech on the Fat Linux report. It was just reported in the community for several months. Uh, it was in the July it was in July 8th. Other than that, yeah, the install instructions are there to install to any of your OS. So all you Arch heads, you can jump right on it and make it happen. Gentoo, Fedora, you know, Fedora ARM works. Debbie, so, so now, now the, the thing is that, now with, with, with some of these OS's though, you can run your favorite OS, but it's kind of like, why would you run an OS that doesn't, uh, that doesn't afford you the acceleration? You know, so it's a thing of, okay, yeah, I really want to run Gentoo on this thing, but you know, you've got an HDMI port, you've got video acceleration, you've got libraries and things that you actually need to run acceleration and it's secret sauce. You'll never know. It tastes good, it's there, but you'll never get the recipe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like everything else, you know? I mean, except for the Mali 500, all of these GPUs are completely shut down. You get binaries and you get I'm gonna talk a little more about that in a minute, but you get it, you can get it from the manufacturer, but you can't build it. So, that, so that's why I said it's not fair as far as the ecosystem goes, because Ubuntu and Lenaro and, 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 you know, and, and their mix, 
they get things, whereas the fedora guys won't have that, the arts guys won't have it, other distros won't have it unless you are, you know, unless you join Lenaro. Yeah, and so uh, Android is, Android is, is there. Angstrom is a nice operating system. It's there as well. Open Weird Plan 9 is very obscure, but you can run it on, uh, on the ARM too. And so these are what, these are the, the distros and the OSs that are supported. That solid run says, okay, we know this works. It actually, it ships with Ubuntu 10.04. And you know, that's kind of old, but that was like the last supported release, you know, of Ubuntu that ran on, you know, ARM, on like an ARM v7. And so it's got the 2.632 kernel. There are newer kernels, and you can actually run Ubuntu Core Beta uh, 12.04, and you can get it up with like a 3.31 kernel, and you know you can you can run the the, the latest and greatest, but you got to do all the footwork. You know it's 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 a it's a bit of work. Android Froyo, it, that's very old too, but you know it it's supported. So you say, okay, so what? You know, it, does anybody not understand why this device is awesome? No, no, really. I mean, I, I, because I, I've, I've seen that some people say, okay, you know, they look at it, they turn it around. Where, where is it at, actually? Ah, oh, okay. Let me make sure it's not empty. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so people say, you know, so, so, so what? Like, you know, it's got this. You say it's got that. You know, why should I buy this? What can I do with it? You know, like, what is really the purpose? Because, you know, I mean, you got you to gotta kind of have some vision or be an enthusiast to really like get it right away. So there are a big list of the video modes that it supports. And so, you know, it can, it can display the Star Trek Enterprises screen. It can, it can do some big, some big resolutions. So there is the flash. So I just, Solid Run actually has, a pa they have packages available, uh, Flash Media Player, there's a Flash Media Player 10 application, and there's a Flash Media plugin. And so, you install those, uh, those dev packages, and you go to YouTube, and it'll work in Firefox. They also built, they've also built Chromium. So, you know, you can run uh, Google Chrome, and you, the, you can do the 1080p stream, and it'll play all day long, no frills. So if you, if you and you guys have Netflix, you can, you, you can, you know, watch all your movies on Netflix, online, you know, some people watch like uh, soap operas and stuff, you can watch your soaps, you know, through the browser, you know, right on your big screen TV, you know? So that was just, you know, me just going through, kind of clicking just to show, you know, <laughs> things that they, I mean, it, it flash works. It is, so you don't have to use Ganache and then hope that it works. This is an Adobe Flash plugin. It comes from Adobe, well, from Marvel, from Adobe to Marvel to to Solid Run to you. It is a Flash plugin. So, like you look at Roku, look at WD Live, all of these devices, they can do Flash, you know, but they have to pay big bucks to be able to do that Flash. This is the only developer device that I have seen that has the Flash plugin and you don't have to be an engineer with the company, you know, and you're like in some, you know, bunker, you know, playing with the device, you know, and this is out in the wild, you know, you can, you can download it. And that is major for this platform, that's major for embedded in itself. So another big thing about the Qbox is that you see all of that, it can do all of this, but you can't cook an egg on it. It doesn't get that hot. The power footprint of this device, being that it is an ARM processor, is very minuscule. It is very, very minuscule. So it'll run between three and four watts, but in running three, and three to four watts, that is on the AC side. On the DC side, it's actually running over half of that. So, you know, the converter, you lose a lot in converting from, from uh, 120 volts down to five. You know what I mean? So this, this guy runs at five volts. So what do you think it will cost you in a year to run this Q-Box? 
24-7. Somebody just guess. It doesn't matter. You can say 500 bucks. $2.38. That was an awesome guess. It was wrong. $2.10. <laughs> 24 hours. Cost you 22 right? Say that again, please. Yeah, so he said, he said, yeah, he, so he said, he had a comment, he said, the East Sater, he said, the East Sater, uh, whatever, whatever gets, whatever the East yeah, yeah, so any, yeah, it's, it's 24 hours a day, you can leave it running, you can, I mean, you're not, now, the, the TV, it, alarm clocks consume more power than that thing, and so in it, you're getting 1080p video, you got, uh, cryptographic uh, encryption security accelerator in that thing. You've got 2D and 3D video acceleration in there. You've got Spadiff audio in there. You've got gigabit ethernet in there. And you can pay just $2.10. It's, it's, it's somewhere around like, I forgot how much it was a day. It's, I mean, and, and, that's, and that's at Charlotte prices. That's at, you know, around eight cents a watt or a, ki a kilowatt. Yeah, for a kilo yeah, kilowatt here. In the area. So, you know, you try to run your desktop, laptop will be like 20, is it 26 watt? No, no, I'm thinking Adam, it's, it's like 126 watts, ain't it? Yeah, you know, and, and so, and the laptop ain't doing all of that. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's portable. I mean, you're not gonna take this on a plane and then try to, you know, you can't type on it. But, uh, <laughs> but for what it is, you know, if you want a server, that, that's a big thing, you know, like you got the server at the end of the bed and you kick it and the fan is like, you know, got all these like moths in it. You know, that's like, that, that's, that's, not, that's not what to do. And so at the end, and what you're paying for that is heating up the room, you got to pay for AC and things. And so the reason why ARM, we really are seeing a revolution in computing with these ARM devices because this is going to the data center. You know, if, if, if that is what it costs, because in the data center, everything's about power. How much you're paying for, you know, per amp, per, you know, and then cooling. How much is cooling? So when you have something with such a low power footprint, you can cram a bunch of these in one space also and pay, you know, f fractions of what you pay for, like, you know, big metal, x86 stuff. Adam, you know, the, I think Adam, Adam is what will get down like 26 watts. It, it gets nowhere near what ARM can do as far as power consumption. So, you know, this is, uh, this is stuff that you just don't, you just don't see everywhere as far as combination of hardware and power footprint. So, is that going to work or did I do something wrong? So that is proof right there. When I told you that it, was, it runs, so it'll run three watts all day long. But that is a, a DC inline um, meter that I have, watt meter. And so I put that in between the power supply and the cue box. So the power supply is over here and the cue box is on this end. So it's actually telling me what it's asking for from the power supply before it gets converted. Like a lot of the other, um, the other like meters that you'll see, like the kilowatt, it, it's on the AC side. So it's only showing you after conversion what it's asking for. It's not showing you actually what the chip is asking for. The, that, that, that Shiva core, that, that PJ4 processor itself runs sub uh, one watt, just, just naked, you know, with no ethernet, no USB, nothing, nothing connected to it. It runs below one watt. So with all those other peripherals and all those other uh, PHYs or physical hardware devices on the die, connected and you sending traffic, it'll, it's, it's, it's really wanting 1.5 watts. So if you had like uh, uh, an array of like car batteries and you were running, well, some people run off the grid and if you're running DC, then it's like, wow, you know, that's big savings. But it really, <clears throat> in actuality, it's, it wants, it, it's sub two watt. So, you know, Liquor Dog thinks that is amazing. You know, I mean, think, think about it. It, it is, it's running. You have this little bitty thing, this processor, this whole system. And so that's why it's a SOC. It's a system on a chip, literally. It's got everything on it. So here's the, 
Like, you know, I mean, so that's the first thing you, you, you do. When you see a device, it's like even like, like this mouse. I want to take it apart. I just got it. I want to tell what's in it. So I took it apart. Well, no, I didn't take it apart. We're not going to say that because I want the warranty. Somebody took it apart, and I was there and took pictures. <laughs> they took theirs apart, not mine. And so, you know, that's, you know, cue box right there. That's the bottom there. There are four, you know, you guys saw the four little feet. You just peel those off, four screws, basic stuff. But I'll tell you what, that thing is crammed in there. So once you get that off, you pretty much got board and sink. You know, that, that, that metal part going around, it's, it actually sits right up against the processor, and that's used as a heat sink. Of course, there's no, it's, it's just passive, you know, uh, cooling, convection, so to speak. And so um, it, there's no fan, there's nothing else there. That's, that's what you got. And that is, that's what does the cooling. It doesn't get that hot, actually, either. When, even when you're, you're doing uh, 1080p video, I, I mean, I'll play, you know, I love, everybody loves the Matrix, so, you know, I'm playing the Matrix, and I'm watching Jurassic Park, and, you know, it's like, you don't smell, like, uh, you know, like, hair cooking or something, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not like the other, plot. like, like, I've got Panda board, and you can smell it. Once you start doing some intensive stuff, like, I build kernels on it, and you can, you can smell it, can't you? Tell them, you can smell it, don't you? <laughs> he's, he's a Panda board guy. So, you know, that's the, just a, you know, a front view of it, naked. And so if you think size-wise, that is chapstick right there. <laughs> that is a small, small device. And this board on the top, actually, it wants to come off, but it was soldered on. And I start, it's, it was only two pins that they don't even go to anything. It's, it's just to keep it from whenever you go putting in, you know, uh, RJ45 connectors that it won't break. And I started to desolder it just to show you what was underneath it, but I said, ah, I'm not going to. Well, no, I actually, actually, you, you know what? I, I hooked up. I had, my, I had my helping hands hooked up. I had the solder iron hooked up. And I walked out, and then I came back in. I did something, and I kicked it, and I, like, burned the carpet. So I, I said, screw it. You know, I didn't want to. I was mad then. And so there's a side view of it. And so big deal, another big deal, seeing that picture. It's got a, 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 a real-time clock that's backed by a battery. That is a big deal. That's, that's, a, that's a really big deal. Panda board doesn't have it. So, you know, you restart and it says, uh, you know, 1962 or, you know, something like Every time you restart, it may be a different time. Angstrom is the only operating system that, that will keep time for you. Anything else? Not going to happen. So that battery. Do they have pins? It looks like it's got a header in the middle of it there. Is there, there, is there a header? That's, that's, not, that's not a header. That's, that's a chip. He, so the question he asked, he said, does it have pins? He's, he's wanting to know if there are headers or, you know. Yeah, so now, so he's one, he wants like GPIO so you could, you know, control something. Now, you can, you can steal GPIO from pretty much anything, but as far as on, on the PCB, there are no unpopulated headers. It's so small that, you know, they engineered it to where, you know, it's, it's right to spec, point blank. And it's going in a case. It's not like it's, it's, it's naked out in the open, you know, so. But uh, this guy right there, the, the black thing facing that way, that's the SPDIF connector uh, for the audio. And right here is the actual IR receiver right there for the uh, infrared for the remote control. Oh, that's a better view of it. But uh, let's see what we got in here. There is the processor itself. And right above it is the, those are two uh, of the memory chips right there. So that, that is the one gig of DDR3 RAM running at 800 megahertz. That's, a big, that's another big deal. OK, so actually, you know what? We, we've got. You got one set down there at the bottom. But see, the, and one thing about the Q-Box, as of right now, there is no, th the documentation as far as, you know, um, the, uh, what is this? It's like board, uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to, there's a specific name for it. 
I can't remember the name, but, but so the, uh, reference, the reference design for it, and it, like all that data is not actually out for, for this specific reference design. So, you know, some, like if you look at the uh, Panda, well, look at Panda, Beagle Board, Beagle Bone, TI does a really good job at documenting things. And so, you know, if you got like an oscilloscope, you know, okay, this clock is right here. You probe that pin, you can find it, you know, what every bus signal is doing and you know everything all of the pins and every signal on each pin is documented for you you know you don't yeah that that is yeah that is the bottom so that's right where that that heat sink will you know touch on that guy and then uh, radiate the heat uh, above it so that's the end of that right here so I'm, I'm gonna try to do this demo so if you need any, you know, any information about QBox, you go to solidrun.com. Really, if you just Google QBox, then you know, Solid Run will come right up, and you go to the site, jump on the forum, jump on the wiki, and you guys on IRC, jump in the IRC channel. There are you know, quite a few guys in there. The, uh, the CTO, Rabia, he's in there, and he's, I mean, like, he's the guy who does the majority of the, of the, of the kernel work. Uh, he used to work for Marvell. He's a he's a he's a really he's a really uh, knowledgeable engineer. So let's see if I can. Uh, I got it hooked up to the this guy right here, and let's see if uh, it'll come up. Come on, baby. Well, it's, it's not going to be instantaneous, but. And if that if that don't work, I re I reboot it with sys requests and then try to oh ah oh, that's 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 not it. So uh wait what, look tell me if that light goes off on the front. Okay, all right. So now let's see if uh we can get it back to this source here. Finding that. Is, oh, thought it was gonna work right there. Yeah, she's in there, and I got my card in there. Sometimes it takes a little second, but I stayed up all night, and I actually I was in one of the one of these rooms, and I got everything, you know, working some of the demos. Let me. What if I disconnect this guy right here? Okay. No more time. Anybody got any questions? So, you know, any anything? Say it again, please. Yeah. Oh, really? Think that's what that is? You might be very so. Yeah, it, it is. It is. On, yeah. How much does it cost? Oh, it costs one hundred and thirty nine dollars U.S. And it's, it sounds better at ninety nine euros. But, you know, we don't deal with it, <laughs> you know. So, it, so you got to. Yeah. And then you got to hit that. Yeah. yeah but uh, so uh, right now. Up oh, there it is. Bam. So right now you can't exactly get it. Because uh, you know it's a pretty high demand for these guys, and um, they 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 just sell out like right away. Okay, so it's just like you know any other platform, you know, as far as yeah, I can run top, buddy. Let's let's get a let's let's blow it up. Let's try to get this bigger for you. Uh, Missed that T. Let me spin it here a little bit. So, and right now, um, I can I can make it do. Um, I had it doing uh, 1980 by uh, 1080, 1920 by 1080. Yeah, I had it doing uh, 1600 by by 1200. 
you know, and right now it's, it's set at uh, optimized for the um, for the projector at at 1024 by 768. But uh, well, yeah. So yeah, you 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 can allo you allocate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what what? Say that again, please. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't hear what you. I didn't I still didn't hear what you said. Okay, so so I've got uh, let's see which one is she. See that's sound over HDMI right there. Uh, so you can ignore that little stuff at the beginning. So right here, you can you can set your resolution right in there. Um, it was something that I was why I went there. I can't remember why. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, it was something else that I was wanting to show. I was wanting to talk about in there. I had a brain fart. I don't remember. Okay. So now. I just got this keyboard, so I'm not used to it at all. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, which one might work? So I don't know. This might not work. It works everywhere else, but OK, that was not going to work. But this guy right here will work. <laughs> It's gonna look like crap, but it'll work. And so, it's this this projector, like as you saw from the screenshots that I showed you in the uh, presentation, that you know it it looks and it moves fast. You know, it's it's Quake three. You know, and so this is using uh, Open G Open G L E S. So anything that supports Open G L E S, you can use uh, you can leverage the acceleration in the hardware. And you know it'll show. Well, actually, it's kind of clearing up now, somewhat. It'll show no frills, and uh, you know you can get you know uh, pretty good frames per second out of it and whatnot. But um, let me see. Uh, let me make sure. Okay, so then there's another little uh, cheesy demo in here where it just pretty much it just draws an image. So those are like, I don't know, like titles of movies, but this projector is like completely screwing up. And so what it's supposed to do when it's larger, it'll, uh, it'll stop on it, it'll rotate, and then it'll you know, spin a few different ways. And it's very high resolution. And I mean, that thing is like blazing through uh, you know, that meter right here. So what I also have is, I have a video, I have a couple video clips. Hmm. Yeah, there it is. I, I completely overlooked that. So, you know, run good old totem. And maybe, maybe it'll work. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I haven't tried to, I haven't tried to play this. I actually, I, I was a bad boy and I downloaded it over the, oh, it's stereoscopic 3D. That, that is, that's something else right there. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me, let me see something. I've got another one. I can hear the audio. Yeah, no, that, that ain't, that's not what we want here. It's not what we want, so. Sample MKV, what is that one? Hmm. I, 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 well, <laughs> I didn't download it. It came. <laughs> that was already there. <laughs> uh, monster. Oh, that's stereoscopic 3D2. I remember that one. No, that won't work either. Okay, so now I have something in the QBox directory. Okay. Now, the. The audio in this thing is kind of screwed up, but um, 
And of course you can't see it. Can you hear that over here? Who's ever close to the projector? But so, so just imagine this little bitty thing next to your, or underneath the TV. So let's see what's going on here. Yeah, and it, it kind of like, it doesn't, you know, it, that projector or something, you know, as I said, I stayed up. I haven't been asleep yet, actually. But uh, I stayed up all night, and I got some things working, but like pretty much nothing that really was worth showing in regards to the 3D acceleration and 1080p stuff worked. You know, it took, sound never worked when I was trying it before, it just, it just worked. But uh, that's what kind of surprised me. But just imagine having this, you know, next to your TV, just on all the time. And so, you know, it's, it's multi-purpose. So you can have it um, downloading torrents. Let's just say you're downloading operating system torrents that are free and open source, <laughs> you know? And, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and so, uh, you know, it could be downloading torrents, it could be, you know, uh, app cache repository, it can be an LDAP server. I've got, you know, I've got one doing pretty much all of that stuff. And as I said, it's staying under that power envelope and, you know, it's multi-purpose. And it's also a media center for me. Really? So like I was, I was telling you guys about the, MT, in the MTU, if you try to run this command on something that's not giggy, it'll, it'll, it'll bark at you. So you can, you can set the MTU to, and so that's what they call jumbo frame. Yeah, and so, you know, I mean, you, you hook it right up to your, now all you gotta do is get yourself a gigabit router, and uh, you're cooking with grease, buddy. Well, that's what I mean, get switch router, what's the difference? The router's gotta switch bills. Well, no, you know, but it's, 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 one, it's not one and the same, but it's built in, so. Can we get security in here for this guy? <laughs> Anybody got any other questions? Any other concerns, any other, anything? Well, you can run a Mythbox front end, but you really want to use XBMC. And XBMC has got um, that CEC. So if, if, you, if you hook it up to your TV and you press power, or you, you, know, you, you shut down the, uh, the XBMC, it'll shut off the TV, just like that. You know, so everything works. There's a, there's a distri the distribution called uh, Zilka, and it is, you got XBMC already built, prepackaged, and I, I think it's, I think it's, it's Slack. I think it's Slackware based too, but uh, it, you know, it doesn't matter what it's based on. You know, you just want the media center aspect of it. So yeah, X, Xbox Media Center is really the way to go. Myth TV, the front end, you can do it, but it, it's, it, has, it hasn't been built yet for the platform because it's, it's pretty much, it's very new in that regard. Anybody else? Any other questions? Well, anything anybody want to see? I can show DMSG G if you want to. Say it again, please. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, it's it's actually it's not a lot in there. So it's not a lot in there at all. Not a lot. Whatever. You know, it shows the, you know, IW MMXT. That's a big deal. Thumb E, VFP. Um, and so with this kernel, I mean, it pretty much no. No modules or nothing. Everything's built in. So, you know, you, you really won't see it, but um, yeah, of course it is. And so, as, so it shows as like the, the Marvel Dove platform, which is like a, a, um, a uh, net book, net top, whatever you want to call the thing. And um, a lot of support because it, it's based on the same, uh, you know, core. And so... Let's see if there's anything interesting to show you here. Uh, and so you can also, it also does scale, and so it'll scale from, it'll go from uh, 8 meg down to, f uh, no, 800 megahertz down to 400 megahertz, uh, you know. So you see the PMU, uh, so it says, it's got, it's, it's showing, you know, uh, CPU, all of the processing units is showing you right there what, what speed they are, 
the G JL core for the um, for your CPU frequency scaling. SASA, that's the cryptographic uh, encryption security accelerator. Uh, bop, bop, bop. We should have Zor in here somewhere too. And, and all that stuff is built into the kernel, actually. Vmeta, that's what's doing your uh, acceleration for your uh, 1080p. And so there's your SATA uh, stuff going on right there. There's actually, so it's a watchdog timer in there too. So if you know, if any of you guys are doing something, you know, like you're trying to put some sort of rover on Mars or something, and you know, you want it to always be up, and if it's if it can't do something, uh, the watchdog timer will. So you can say, okay, if you can't ping this IP address, or if you can't touch this file, or if the CPU uh, utilization gets above a certain point, if it becomes unresponsive, it will re it'll restart it. It'll automatically, it doesn't matter what state it's in, it'll restart it. And you can't, once you, but once you set that, uh, you, can, you can end up in a loop. And you know, I mean, you, you can turn it off, but while it's up, uh, and you, if you have an issue, you know, you gotta be quick enough to try to catch it and then send the module the, uh, the argument to where, you know, it'll turn it off. What else is in there for you? Um, there's your Zor, as I was saying for, you know, that, that actually is in between all your, your writes and your reads. Um, from you know all your media, which is a, a, it's a big deal. Like you know, like the big SSDs have it RAID arrays. That's you know, I mean, that's like you know, top-notch stuff right there. And so, HDMI probing, the framework buffer, and there it is. I think okay. How do they provide the kernel patches? So you asked, how do they provide the kernel patches? So there is a Git tree uh, that's, that's out there. There Dropbox uh, downloads. There's, I mean, there, there, there are quite a few uh, methods. It's, it's not as uniform as a lot of people would like it to be. So that's one thing about this device that if you get it, if you're a dabbler, you may have, it may be a steeper on-ramp. You know, so maybe I'll make it easier for some people. But you know, as it's, it's, everything's not out there for you. So if you, want, if you want something working like, just like that now, what in the out of the box you get, Ubuntu 10.4 running, but none of the acceleration, none of that stuff is there because they can't distribute it. They can't send that to you like that. So you have to then go online and download this, um, this TAR, which has you know, everything in it, like Google Chrome and the Flash Player plugin and, um, and then you install that and all the other packages that'll do, you know, scaling as far as uh, for the CPU and all of that. And, uh, you know, you're, you're off and running. Somebody was kind of had a hand up. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's that's actually on that on that slide, of course, when that slides up. Yeah, you can boot over, yeah, you can boot over. Uh, so the question was, was remote booting, like, you know, can you, can you boot the device without needing any physical storage attached? So yes, you can boot from NFS. Um, well, I can't show that, because I'd have to reboot it to show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, okay, but yeah, yeah, so, so you, can, you, can boot, you can boot from various, you, TFTP with a Pixie boot, all of that, all of that works. You know, like right out of the box. You know, it it, it happens in uh in U boot, and then it'll it'll mount your root from your NFS mount, and then you know pull the kernel from there too. You know, all of that. So. Yeah, that is that's a good idea. Maybe you should do that. Or maybe I'll steal that idea from you and then I'll be rich. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? I think we're about, that's about it on the time. So as I said, go to solidrun.com, support the project, support the product, get it. And as I said, you know, it's a, it's a developing community. It's, it's steadily evolving. So there'll be more updates. There'll be, 
you know, more people streamlining, streamlining things and, and more developers to get on board to where, because right now there's a big user base and there's not enough developers. So you find guys saying, hey, you know, uh, I can't set the clock or, you know, and then the, the forum is full of, of guys having end user issues versus guys actually saying, okay, well, you know, I set up this repo here, you know, I want to build this distro or, hey, I noticed something in the kernel, so that's more what's needed for this project. So my name is Brian Smith. The Q box, go to solid-run.com, check it out, jump on irc.free node, hash uh, Q box, and uh, talk to the guys and uh, get one and contribute. And I'm, a, I'm always on IRC, I idle in like 40 channels. So, you know, if you see me, I'm Brian Stein on IRC, and uh, you know, just send me a PM or something, and I'll, you know, help you out if you got one. Uh, <laughs> Cloud stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies, these bugs are getting discovered and then fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the, you know, of the open source community. It is global and it's definitely because of the users. Community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on to IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, Everyone can see how CloudStack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of CloudStack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think, it's, uh, I think it's an assumption, I think. When you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle, number one, that mass scale, number two, it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago, uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers. Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support, uh, different network models, you can pick up whatever suits you better. Cloudstack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint, it's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using Cloudstack, they were using it to transcode video 
and I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up, uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers, and then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think CloudStack as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits with the cloud stack. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and the administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business changing applications from small office phone systems to mission critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on asterisk. Digium has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again. This time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Asterisk based systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Asterisk or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Asterisk. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again.